So here's the book I'll be using for the following videos if you want to um, take a look at it. It's Fundamentals of Differential Equations, 9th edition. Example 1. In the case of free fall, an object is released from a certain height above the ground. It falls under the force of gravity. Newton's second law, which states that an object's mass times its acceleration equals the total force acting on it, can be applied to the falling object. And so this is as following. M for mass, d2h divided by dt squared, which is our acceleration, that's a, our second derivative, which equals negative mg, which is the total force acting on it. Where m is the mass of the object, h is the height above the ground, which is going to be our um, integral that we're trying to find right now. dth divided by dt squared, which is acceleration. This is acceleration. g is the constant and of gravitational acceleration. And negative mg is the force due to gravity. This is a differential equation containing the second derivative of the unknown height h as a function of time. Fortunately, the above equation is easy to solve for h. All we have to do is divide by m and integrate twice with respect to t. That's it. If you guys want to try this before I try it right now, please give it a try. And I'm going to do it right now. So, so the first thing we need to do for this following equation is divide by m. So that's what we're going to do. So let's see right here. This is going to be 1m. It's, we're doing that be in terms of um, trying to get everything on one side. So this is going to be 1m. And this would be 1 right here, right? So this goes like that. And so what do we end up getting? We end up getting d, which is our acceleration. This is our acceleration. So just don't get confused with this. And feel free to pause the video any time to, to try to think about it, because if you haven't done this in a while, it might be a little confusing. So, Alright, so we did that. It's pretty simplistic. Now we just need to integrate twice, right? And so in order for us to do that, we need to have the integral. So here's the following integral. And so we needed to integrate with respect to t. And that's what the problem was telling us to do, so we're going to do that right now. So with respect to t, it's going to be d of t, which equals the integral. Before that, it said that g is our constant, so always pull out your constants, because it just gets in the way. So, which is this? We're going to do the integral of d of t, right? So we got negative g times d of t. And now we need to integrate. And so, let's do that up here. So we're going to go up here. d2 of h divided by dt squared. d of t over d which equals so now we just cancel some stuff we cancel that out with the d of t that means there's just d of t right there and we cancel the d with the d up here which just gives us d right there and let's see right here we're going to have negative g right and what rule do we use we all we're going to use the power rule So I hope you remember the power rule. And we learned it in calculus. If you don't, I'm going to show you right now how to do it. So this is d of t. Oh, oops. Yeah, I'm just going to put d of t. So now, instead of doing all that, I'm going to put a square around it. Because this just means that we're going to do the power rule over here. And so the power rule says that we do n plus 1 x n plus 1 and I hope this looks kind of familiar plus c 
And so we just plug in what we need to know about this. In this case, for integrating in terms of t, and we don't have any t's, so the n's going to be zero. So n is going to equal zero, and so we're going to get one over one x, which is zero up there. I just hope you see the n right here. So it's going to be zero, and so that gives us one, right? Plus c, and c is going to be our new constant. And so that ends up equaling x, or in, in terms of this, it's going to be t, right? So let me erase that. This is terms of t. So if I wrote it, wrote it down, just write t. So then we end up getting t plus c. And we're not done yet, but give me a second when we get back to this page. And so, now that we, re we reduced everything, and I rewrote everything, right? So we already took our first integral. And so, this is going to be our acceleration. Or actually our velocity, my bad. This becomes our velocity. The last, um, the second derivatives are acceleration, our first derivative is velocity. So keep that in mind if you don't remember. So that's our velocity. I reduced it. Remember, we pulled out the constant negative g. We took the integral of d of t, which was just d of t. So we ended up getting t plus the constant c of 1. And this constant indicates the velocity. And in terms of this, this is going to help us when we integrate it's going to make another t so make sure you keep it right there this is a constant but a constant a part of the integration this is a, a natural constant so that's why we could pull it out so we're going to do what we did earlier again and it, feel free to pause the video and try it yourself and so we're going to do another integral so it's going to look something like this and so what's going to happen is we're going to have d of h so I'm going to write a little smaller so you just in case that that you can see it, you know. So it becomes d of t, remember, because we're we're um, taking the integral with respect to t, and this becomes d over d of t. Remember, if the d over d just could cancel out, so that's why we write it like that. So we could cancel out sideways, or we could cancel out like this, and then we could cancel out this way too. And so we just gotta cancel out the t's. And so that's one way of canceling it out, right? Or we could cancel it out the way we're always taught, which is by um, the cross. And so it doesn't really matter how you c cancel it out. So that just becomes h. And that's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find h. The initial height, right? That's what we're trying to find. And h of it's h is going to be the height of the object at time t. So this is going to be, when we first start our equation, this is going to be the the formula for the height of the object at time t, which I'll sh once we finish, I'll, uh, I'll show you again everything that we found. So just don't worry about it right now. Let's focus on integrating this next part. And so what's the first step? It's always to pull out the constant. And this is the natural constant, which is gravity, right? And so let's see, we got t plus c01. So now we gotta take our integral with respect to t and c01. So it's gonna be something like this. And so we're gonna do what we've been doing, which is the power rule. So we take the power rule, and I'm not gonna skip this step. Maybe if we're doing another video, I'll skip this step. For right now, we're gonna. I'm gonna show you it, it just for the sake of if you uh, don't remember, you know. And so we're gonna take the integral of t. So we we gotta take the integral with respect to each one. So this is gonna have integral two. So we got two integrals. If you can see it, two integrals, one, two. So 
We're going to do an integral of t. And the integral of our constant c of 1. So it's integral d of t, d of t. And this becomes, if you remember, it became t for the other one. So it becomes t for this one. And so what happens is we're going to have 1, so let's see, 1 over 0 plus 1. Remember, we're doing the power rule. And if you feel free to, to what do you call it, skip ahead if you know how to do this. And if you don't, feel free to keep watching. And let's see. So that becomes t. And whatever that we're doing in terms of n, if you didn't remember what this where this equation is coming from, please rewind it to look at the power rule, or if you feel free to look it up. And so this ends up giving us, and you know what it ends up giving us, it gives us c1 of t. So that's good, right? c sub 1 and t. t in terms of time, right? And so now that we take the this one, integral for this, and so this is going to be the our sentiment, second integral. So that makes it n, and that makes n equal one, right? Because we have t, it's going to be one. So it's going to be one plus one, and t, and it's going to be one plus one. So what's that end up giving us? It ends up giving us t divided by two, t squared divided by two. So, so the last thing we need to know is so let's put it over here. So now we know where our function is. So that's going to be t. Actually, I take the integral off, right? Because we're already integrated. So it's going to become t g t squared and a half and just take note that we're multiplying this right because this is where we're still multiplying so this is multiplied in everything else was just adding and because we added the new constants so this is going to be plus and if you guessed it c1 t and plus our new constant, because every time you integrate, you get a new constant. So there will be a, a new constant down here that says plus c of 2. And so we get a new constant that's going to say plus c of 2. And let me explain everything that happened. This is our initial height, right? Initial height. So if we were to be given the what the constants are we will know where our initial height is if we were given what this is this is going to be our velocity in terms of time and then this one is going to be our acceleration due to gravity as you can see with the constant right here and then h right here like i said i was trying to explain earlier maybe now you'll understand a little bit I was just talking earlier, probably were like, what is he talking about? And so this h is going to be the height of the object at time t. And so you could think of it something like this, where we have a tree. And so we, I'm going to explain to you right now what everything's happening. We have a tree, and then we have an apple. And some people haven't taken physics before. And so this probably might be a little confusing. So this going to be negative mg. And this is going to be mass times gravity, which is going to be pulling it down. And so what we're trying to find was this, the formula for our height. That's why we were taking all these integrals. And of course, we didn't even know we don't know what our initial um, acceleration is or 
what do you call it, um, velocity, or, we don't even know our height, we don't know anything. But this is just a general way to find what our, um, equation is. So this is just some review of how to integrate. And so, what else can we take from this? That's about it, but we're going to have another example right now, and if you don't understand this, then I might make another video explaining this if you want me to. Just let me know. Alright, this is our next example, example 2. It says, in the case of radioactive decay, we begin from the premise that the rate of decay is proportional to the amount of radioactive substance present. This leads to the equation. And so, I try to color code stuff so you guys can understand the process of this. So the rate of decay is right here, and if you have anything to do with rate, you know that that's going to have to do with some kind of derivative. The radioactive substance present is going to be your A, and it, you wouldn't really know that, but it, until it says the following right here. It says where A is less than zero is the unknown amount of radioactive substance present. And so now we're given what our radioactive substance is at time t. And so it doesn't really mention anything about that yet, but that's what we're going to take the derivative with respect to. And so k is the proportional constant, and so now we know that we have a constant, just like how we had a constant with the gravity. To solve the differential equation, we write it in the form of 1 divided by a, and so what happened here and is that we divided by 1 over a, and so that was reduced and we got 1 over a over here and we what do you call it um, times d to t over 1 because we are going to take take on two integrals one integral with respect to a and one integral with respect to t and so there we're going to be given this function down in here and so let's see, it says a is less than zero, it's an unknown amount of radioactive substance present at time t. So in theoretical sense, we're both taking uh, the derivative, such, I mean integral, with respect to t. And so that's just basically the same, but this is in terms of, this is just constant with the time. This is just only time. And this is going to be how much the radioactive decays over time. So that's that's two ways to understand it, right? This is just time. So just in case you were a little confused of what I was saying, this is just time. And this is going to be the radioactive decay over the period of time. And so I didn't even spell it right. So radio so I'm just going to put radio, so you, you understand what's happening. So we're integrating with respect to radioactive decay, or A, and we're respecting integrating with respect to time. So we're going to do that right now. Alright, so... Alright, so now we got to take the integral for our given equation right here, and our we already separate the variables in terms of of finding time and the radioactive uh, the amount of radioactive substance because that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to end up figuring out how the total of of set element for this radioactive decay, maybe plutonium or something. It doesn't say so. Let's just start with our problem, right? Let's let's see. Always take out your constant. That's probably the first step of anything. Of any of these kind of problems, always remove your standard constant, which our standard constant will be negative k. And so now we're just going to have to integrate with respect to t, which is going to be d of t. And so in this case, we're going to have to use the power rule again, right? And so if you guys don't remember, just go back. I'm not going to take the time to do it again right here just because you have a video so you can always just look back and so that's going to end up becoming if you remember what it was last time it's going to be t plus 
set some sort of constant, which is going to be C sub of 2, because we're going to have a constant that comes over here from this part that we integrate. So always be careful what kind of constant you put in first. It doesn't really matter which, which way you label it, as long as it set constant is there. So it's going to be C sub 2, if you can't see it. I'm going to do it again. So right here we're going to integrate it for this. And so we're going to integrate with respect to finding A. We're going to integrate, we, we take the derivative with respect to A. And so if you could think of it like that, these both cancel out. And so we got to remember our our integral, which is going to be ln of A. And this is just one of the integrals you got to remember in calculus. And if you don't remember, I might make a video later explaining said um, integral or integrals. So it just depends on you, the viewer, if you guys want to see that. Just please let it, leave a comment down below. And so right here, let's see. Now we got to bring this down. So we're just going to bring it down again. So, so we're both working at the same place right here. And so what we're going to do, we're going to to just work with algebra right here. We're going to subtract c sub 1. And c sub 1. And so that's going to give us ln of a, which is just going to equal to negative kt, which is our constant times the time plus c sub 2, which is the acceleration, right? And this is so said some sort of velocity for one what the problem is asking. So you don't really know what it what it's truly asking for right here. But all we know we're trying to find is the amount of radioactive substance at said some sort of time. Which is gonna be if you don't remember this is what we're we're gonna find. Something like that. It's just how much substance is still left before it reaches zero. And so let's see right here. We're going to continue our problem. And so we're still working with algebra. We already did all the calculus we needed to do. No? And so now we're going to do E, E, and E. But if you remember that we could combine like um, terms. It's a for like let's say we had E of X and E of X. And so, if we wanted to, we could combine these, and I'll make e two of the x. But we have something a little different. We have two constants, and so we could do the same kind of thing. We could combine them. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. And so let's see what happens next. So, and we reduce it. Let's so gonna put it up here. And so this is what we're going to get. So we're, remember we're trying to find the amount of radioactive substance present. And so let's see, we get negative, which can be a negative kt. It's constant times time. Plus e. And the constants in, in um, our exponent. So we have that. And so, the last thing to mention is says, but if the initial radioactive substance is given for the value of C, then our equation would be. And so, we are not given any radioactive substance, so this is the equation that would be if we had radioactive, a said radioactive substance. But we don't have to worry about that. We have our equation right here. And we don't know what our um, amount of radioactive substance would be. We just know that we have the equation now to work with the problem. And so it looks something like this. We have some kind of radioactive particle with some kind of vectors coming out indicating that it has radioactive decay. If you're wondering how something like this would look. And so what else do we need to know about this? 
let me think well that, that's a, it for this problem right here so hopefully that helps you guys it's going to be part one for our class for differential equations and if you would like to see more content like this please leave a comment down below please give a, a like to the video and please subscribe to my channel it would help my channel grow and making videos like this for you guys is everything because I love making these kind of videos and it helps me to learn some new things sometimes when I spend the time trying to teach so thanks once again and I'm really grateful for whoever comes out and watches this if you guys need to to want to watch anything else if you want any specific content please let me know too and thank you everybody and can't wait to see you next time bye